So now, who's required to actually fulfill subcontracting plans? So where does that, do you, do you know, like, I mean, what the threshold is and things like that? So I don't want to talk about thresholds and the reason why, because the threshold always changes, right? Okay, and I don't want to get true. a number stuck that's, in somebody's head. That's a good head. point. Very so good. the way that I will say it is, if you are awarded a contract that meets the subcontracting threshold and has subcontracting opportunities, then you are required to provide a small business subcontract plan. And that could be on an individual contract basis. So we call those individual subcontract plans in which for a specific contract, you put together a plan to award, or it could be on a commercial basis. And most commercial companies already have decided with their organization, even before they came to the government, that we're going to give back to our communities by awarding small business contracts. And they've already put a plan in place. So when they now come over to the government arena, they present us with their commercial plan and we accept what they have done. Because most companies do understand the importance of giving small businesses subcontracts. So we do them. on, And then you have the comprehensive plan, which is DOD specific. And that is mostly to um, reduce resources in reporting and compliance. So, now, what makes you so passionate about this? One, I'm a small business owner. Okay. Uh, okay. I do. Um, I have two small businesses. And I just believe that small business needs a piece of the pie. Right. right. We have these large business organizations and small businesses may not be as savvy or have the, no, I want to change that. Small businesses are as savvy. They don't have the monetary resources to go after these large business contracts. And for me, General Dynamics gave me my first subcontract. Oh, really? Right. So, uh, you know, the large businesses understand the value that small businesses bring and the government understands the value that small businesses bring. And that's why we have the requirement for it. But I don't want to just stop at the large businesses. Another thing that we do also is with the small businesses who are awarded contracts with utilization of small businesses, we are will be doing compliance reviews on them as well. One of our major complaints is that small businesses do not give back to small business communities for whatever the reason is, right? However, they are required to. Small businesses, when they are awarded contracts, do have utilization of small business clause in their contracts, and that is for them to utilize small business. You also have limitations of subcontracting in their clauses, meaning that they can only give a certain amount of business to a business that is not similarly situated. That means to a business that is not small. Right. Didn't they recently change the rules on similarly situated? Yeah. They did, but it does. It everything has a limitation, right? And we're sure, doing sure. our compliance to make sure that you're not a pass through for a large business. No, and that yeah. and that, that yeah is really important. Yeah, yeah. no, that you know when you when you do things like that, that's going to help level the playing field yes. for a lot of us yes. out here. Yes, and so I think that it, I mean it just makes sense, right? right? And that, as well as make sure that our small businesses are giving back. They should know how difficult it is to maintain your organization, oh, yeah. right? So if you have qualified small businesses out there, then you do need to be supporting them because we're supporting you. We gave you that contract right. as a small business, yeah, right? Certainly. And we're telling you, you need to utilize other small businesses and that's what we expect for you to do. Right. No, that no, that makes a lot of sense. Now, you said five hundred this year and three thousand next yeah, year. Yeah. And you said you're on track for the yeah, five hundred? Yeah. We're on track. That's wonderful. It's wonderful. Now, is it possible and again I'm you know, mm-hmm, I, I have mm-hmm. crazy ideas sometimes. Mm-hmm. We know that we go to subnet to look for the large companies, but can if say if I was a small business that I wanted to solicit someone. Could I put my information in Subnet? No, so Subnet would not be the place for you to do it. DSBS okay. will be the place for you to do it. Okay. So right, so if you're a small business and you're just soliciting business, you want to advertise right. Right, your business to the federal government community, right? Okay. Because believe it or not, state organizations actually use Subnet as well. State organizations or states when they give their contracts require that they put their awards in DSBS as well. So when you're in DSBS, excuse me, I apologize, when you're in subnet. Subnet. So state, I'll go back to DSBS, but let me make this statement about DSBS. When you're in DSBS, you're not only looking at federal opportunities, you should also be, you're also looking at state because state contracts also require that they put their listing for subcontract opportunities in, in subnet. subnet as well. Thank really? you, in subnet, yeah. States, so, so states, states require 
that their opportunity to be put in yes, subnet. Yes, yes. And I was amazed at that too until I got several calls from contractors who say, I have to put this in subnet um, and I'm having some difficulties with the system when we first launched the new system. And I now, said, oh, this is wonderful. Now, yes. now that applies for all state contracts? Well, it's not, it's not a requirement. The states are requiring it on their own. Oh, so the yeah, states so are, are putting that requirement, imposing that on, on their the, contractors. On contractors. Right, because they see the value in subnet, right? It's like uh, it is the place that bridges the gap between the small business who's looking for an opportunity and the business who's looking for a small business to give an opportunity. DSBS is a little different. Right. So DSBS is where you go if you want us to find you. Okay. Right. Okay. So if you want to advertise that, hey, I have a small business and I am available for small business opportunities, you want to register in the dynamic small business system. You also want to register in the system for award management. Right. Um, it is a requirement if you have a small business contract to look at DSBS to find a small business. When government agencies are looking to figure out, can they set aside an award? Do they have that two or more small businesses? They're looking in DSBS to see whether or not they can find contractors in these particular NAICS code. So you want to be in DSBS. She said it three times. <laughs> yes. We learned today we learned that today. when you're advertising your business, you need to say it three times. And so take that note. <laughs> if she said DSBS three, three times, times, you yes. know where you want to be at. Yes. DSBS. DSBS. Yes. Oh, wow. No, that's great. 